Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2019 battle series. I hope you're all well. We are here. We're ending up the week with this crowd on Ivelto team and it's been a saga to say the least, but it's been very enjoyable. Now I know my demeanor has deteriorated from starting off with this team. Precipice Blades has taken its toll on me, um, but we're back. We've had a, a little break from it, so we're back today. We've got a final version of the team to play today, so we've made some changes and thank Thank you so much to each and every one of you for making suggestions throughout this course of the last two weeks with changes. So we've got rid of the knockoff Oni Velto for one thing, we've got the sucker punch there. I feel like it's got a bit more utility, especially for just picking up sashes, getting those final knockouts and things like that. And we've just removed knockoff for sucker punch. So that's the first change. We've got a little bit of a variation on the ground on spread. So just to make a better utility of that substitute that we've got on it there, making it able to have four substitutes you some one HP left over so hugs thank you so much for that little mention throughout last week we've got Tapakoko exactly the same we've changed the spread on stack attacker it's got a bit more attacking presence to it going into this format and also the incineral we have just kept exactly the same but the Tapu Fini the one thing we have changed one thing we noticed as we were playing this team is we were really vulnerable to things like haul we didn't have any rock type attacks outside of stack attacker and sometimes we just can't bring that option so we've put gravity on the Tapu Fini, we've got rid of Nature's Madness, which I'm not massively keen on, but I prefer to get rid of that than Heal Pulse and Swagger. Now we could get rid of the Swagger, but I mean the I think the swagger is nice just to support that bulky Groudon. So there's a few changes. The paste is down in the description. If you guys want to try it, go ahead. And um, there's the poker paste and the roll paste of the team down there. So check it out. Let me know what you guys think if you take it away and try it. I really do like this team. And I think the problem that we've had with it all the way through this, this two week period is the Precipice Blades accuracy. Now, time and time again, we've seen how incredibly hurtful it is to myself, but only to our games as well. It has lost us games and it just puts you in really precarious positions that you don't want to be in so with that gravity support from the Tapu Fini hopefully that patches that up a little bit better but we've covered all of that so I'm just gonna say thank you so much for all the support that you've, you've given this team this channel and uh, do leave a like if you enjoy this sort of content we'll be back next week with a brand new team on Monday cannot wait and um, I did put a little poll up to ask what you guys want to see so going off that I'm sure a lot of you will be happy with the choice that will be going into next week I'm looking forward to it so don't miss that episode Monday subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these videos and also any of the guides and other content that we have coming out like the Flinch Squad circuit and stuff like that. So, without further ado, let's get into today's episode and uh, crank some music up. And uh, hopefully, it's a good one, guys. So, right. Um, what are we going to kick off with music wise today? Uh, let's see. Um, let's go with. Um, brrr. Elite 4. Elite 4 is a nice one. We're sitting on a rating of 1629. It's not too bad. We had a good stream last Thursday, so we'll be streaming again. Uh, more regular VGC content and other content as well. So if you do ever have a free Tuesday or a Thursday evening, make sure that you do come over to the Twitch channel between 7 and 9.30 UK time and uh, you'll be able to catch up with all the action there. If you do miss it, I'll make sure to upload it on the channel as always so you can catch up with it then. But uh, it's always nice to interact with you guys um, throughout the stream and things like that. So uh, if you are about, like I say, the, the link to the Twitch channel is in the description so you can hop over then just uh, make sure you catch it and uh, it would be cool to see you then hang out of course like it always is with everyone else is it gonna take ages to find an opponent because if it is I'll do the general thing of just cutting <laughs> Magic! We did it! The trick works! So we've got our first opponent of the day. Japanese player 1694 rating? If I can't remember rightly, what is this? Oh man. You know, all the tests that you get for Pokemon. Remembering their names and here we go. Let's jump into Team Pre. So we're lining up with the Xerneas, the Amoongus, the Rabombi, Incineroar, the Renuliclus, Prevolution, and the Groudon. <laughs> so we've got a really, we've got a trick room mode definitely in the team. You can see that from the, uh, I can't remember for the life of me the name of this Pokemon. It's so bad. Um, but yeah, trick room mode there, I would say with the Groudon, probably the Amoongus there. Um, the Rabombi 
has got speed swap as well so we've got to be a little bit careful for that because it can speed swap onto the Groudon this is what makes our trick room element quite good but then the uh, Groudon does conflict that quite a lot you've got the Xerneas as well which is going to be the other means for this this team to operate and uh, get set up and things like that so we do need to be a bit careful around that I do feel like Eveltal's very good here especially for that little um, trick room setup but I don't know if my opponent will go with that I do want some ground immunity though on the team because I do feel that the Groudon will be utilized quite a lot. I think uh, 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 um, is gonna be really nice here, especially for the Amoongus. I think I'll go Stacker and Groudon. Um, yeah, I think we'll go with that. I, do, I don't feel massively comfortable about leaving out the Incineroar, but sometimes you've just gotta kind of make these decisions, see if they go well, and uh, <laughs> hopefully they do. So let's get into this one today. Good luck to my opponent as always, and um, hopefully it's a good one for us to kick off this fabulous Friday. We're gonna see Xerneas Incineroar standard, very popular lead in the Sun and the Moon series. We're gonna lead off with our Eveltal and our Tapu Fini, so. Where's the fake out gonna come? But I mean, we're not in a bad position just to switch stack attacker in, to be honest. I know it opens the door for my opponent to switch into um, Groudon, but at the same time, I think what I'm gonna do, thinking about that Groudon later on in the game, I'm gonna take Eveltal out. Um, because I just feel like I want something with a bit of ground immunity in the back to switch in if the stack attacker's in a terrible, terrible position. Now, we could go for self swagger onto our stack attack and make it incredibly bulky. Um, but we could go for an icy wind as well. Not really too sure what I kind of want to do here. Um, the other thing is go for a snarl and then and then just switch in stack up. But it does it doesn't give us that ground immunity to switch in on if the ground on does come back onto the field. But I prefer to reduce the damage of this Xerneas if I can rather than anything else. I'm gonna see a fake up from the Incineroar. It's gonna be into, yeah, the Aveltal. And there's a Moonblast just doubling in on it. So not going for the, the setup, but into that type of Fini, which is very interesting. Um, we're gonna probably see the Xerneas switch out now, I would imagine. But it does give us a good opportunity to set the Trick Room up ourselves. I think I'm just gonna take this opportunity, send in the Groudon, and I'm gonna go for the Trick Room. We've got to try and take advantage, yeah. The Xerneas going out. I'd imagine the Groudon coming in, yeah. That's fine. That's fine, dear. Um, we'll get the sun up. Incineroar's going to be hitting for incredibly hard damage, but at the same time, we've got the Trick Room up, we've got Groudon in, and then we've got Eveltal in the back to switch in on that stack attacker, protecting it from that Groudon this next turn. Just going to see a U-turn from the opposing Incineroar. Um, we're just trying to keep in mind that this Groudon is going to threaten our stack attacker, like, so heavily. And the one thing that we want to do is preserve it for that Xerneas later on in the game. Robombi coming in now for my opponent. So you're going to see the little... The little Bumblebee, if that's what it is, as the Trick Room does go up for us. It's a bug fairy type, so you can't be fall under the misconception that it is um, a flying type. Uh, I kind of, there's a part of me that wants to just go uh, for the Z-move, but I think this turn I'm going to just press up his blades just to get some damage off onto the pause and ground on before I l launch the, the Z-move in there. Because I don't feel like a Z move will get the, the opposing crowd on. In this particular build from the the build of the, the opponent's team, you kind of got to look at it like it's probably a bulkier sort of ground on. We're going to see that switch out. We're going to see Incinero come in. So we'll catch this with Precipice Blades, which is very nice. We'll probably see the opposing ground on now that. Intimidate from our side would be really useful, obviously, to reduce the damage of that opposing ground on his attacks, but at the same time, can't have everything. Critical hit! There we go! That's huge, that's huge for us. The RNG is shining down on us today. <laughs> so, and we are gonna see a tectonic rage. I'm hoping this is into the stack attacker. Like, our ground on should take this. And it is, it is into <laughs> Veltal. Just felt like the screen just broke there. <laughs> like something just broke. As we are gonna see the Xerneas come in for my opponent. Now we've got access to Snarl, we've got access to the Groundium Z. Um, now we could just go for both. Just the Precipice Blades and the Snarl, I think. It's gonna be useful. 
um, because we don't necessarily need to pull the trigger just yet. And I feel like, the, well, the Velta probably won't protect. I think the main thing that we've got to do now is just get rid of that Groudon. If we can get rid of the Groudon, then it opens the door for Stack Attacker to come in. That critical hit on the Incineroar was huge for us because my opponent instantly loses the Intimidate Cycling going forward and the access to that fake out to try and and shut down our options. So we are gonna see the ground on just protect here and double protect, so it's fine. It's a shame because it would be nice to be able to get at least some damage before we kind of pull the trigger on, on the opposing ground on. We still got the trick room up though. We still got a couple of turns of that. We will just check before we go any further. Yeah, two turns of trick room left. Um, I don't think you go for the Geomancy this turn. I think you go for it next turn. Um, so I could just. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pull the trigger now. We hold fire far too much. I'm gonna pull the trigger on the Groudon, and I'm just gonna snarl. And hope a snarl and a Tectonic Rage is enough. Tectonic Rage might be enough by itself, but we are minus one. Groudon's generally very defensively bulky built, so. I don't imagine that this will be enough. Never know, it's a strong attack. It's a strong attack, so there we go. Ground on to the core of the earth. Boosh. Nah, nowhere near enough damage, but I mean, it does get some damage that we need anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Um, Snarl does hit both targets. Excellent. It's more important for that Xerneas more than anything else. Uh, ooh, we see. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it does make a lot of sense to go for it now. Um, because you can protect this next turn. I would, I just kind of, I, I, it makes sense with how my opponent approached these turns because you protect the last turn, you geomancy this turn, protect the next turn. Getting that snarl off is huge for us though. But we have lost our access to, um, but like I say, all we need to do now is get rid of that ground on it. It's such, a really low position that we, we should be able to, to remove it from the field pretty easily. Once that's gone, Sakataka has such an easy a time coming in and dealing with the two fairies that are left. Gonna see Groudon switch out, Robombi come in. I'd imagine we'll see the Xerneas protect this turn. But again, with two fairies out on the field, like it's perfect opportunity to get stacks stacks in. Precipice Blade's coming out this time. It's actually hitting today, so that's a big positive for us. Um, and getting a little bit of damage onto that Robombi um, and another Snarl into Robomba. So I wonder if we'll see like, um, has it got any like heal pulse or anything like that? Dimensions turn back to normal. We could have went for a substitute there and probably that would have been the, the better option to be honest. Um, we're falling into a little bit of a trap, but if we can get the Xerneas down to just neutral, it makes things a lot easier. I'm gonna save the Robombi switch out. Okay, so I mean, this makes it so much easier because as long as a Snarl or a Precipice Blades hits on this ground on, then we are in the money. Moonblast, where's it into? Into Eveltal, but we should be able to take this. Yeah. Special attack drop, hacks. Snarl hits. Get rid of the Groudon, which is the main thing. Perfect. So, yeah, Stax. Stax has got this all day long now. So, see the Groudon go down. Robombi just left. Precipice Blade single target does actually hit. Groudon has his goggles on today, so making a massive difference <laughs> from previous episodes. We're going a bit over the top of that, maybe. Um, and, yeah, like I say, the Robombi going in. I don't necessarily need to make any um, switch outs here because uh, we don't want stack attack attack and any unnecessary damage so I'll just continue going for these snarls while I can and the match is forfeit so very good game to my opponent I think the big opening point there for us was the incinero coming in and, and getting that big crit on it uh, RNG being RNG um, but yeah I think it would have been difficult to close out obviously the incinero creates a lot of room for my opponent to maneuver their board positions around makes it a little bit more difficult for us to to operate but at the same time i think we still had enough in the tank to to close that one out and like we could clearly identify our win condition there because once the groudon goes down then 
my opponent really doesn't have too many ways to deal with the stack attacker with just the Robombi and the the, um, the Xerneas. And even if the Incineroar was there, you can intimidate it, but it's not really putting on too much pressure unless it has got that low kick that we sometimes see on it. So going into our next game, finding an opponent pretty quickly, so we'll hop over to team preview. So we've got Ale, who is playing a team of Kyogre, Superior, Lunala, Ludicolo, Tapagogo and Incineroar. This feels oddly familiar. Uh, so we've got a, a restricted combination of Kyogre and Lunala. Very strong combination here. We've got the Ludicolo that can pair up nicely with that Kyogre. Superior as well, very, very fast and it has access to things like Glare um, and Contra as well. So if it starts firing off those uh, leaf storms and things like that, they can become very powerful very quickly. So we need to be careful when we're throwing out these snarls from Eveltal. I am going to lead Eveltal. I do feel like it's very strong in this situation. I think Tapakoko is very dangerous for us, but we do have the Assault Vest to help neutralize that a little bit. Uh, I also do have Tapu Fini. Um, I think we do bring Tapu Fini here. Groudon and um, ba -ba -ba boom, boom, boom. Do we bring Incineroar to this match? There's not really any physical attackers on my opponent's team, that's the only thing. Um, which makes me feel like, uh, I don't know whether the Intimidate's really going to be useful, but the Fake Out definitely could be. Um, just for little openings. Stack Attacker, it's not so strong in this match to be honest. Maybe Tapu Koko is the best option just to kind of round off the team with the double, double Tapus. So get into this one and uh, wrap up with this team uh, before we move on to a brand new team next week cannot wait cannot wait guys but I hope whatever you're doing before because I'll probably forget by the end of the episode but just have a lovely weekend whatever you're doing um, I'm saying this so prematurely because we've got a whole match to get into now we're leading off with the Valtel Tepifini seeing Lunala and Tepikoko for my opponent I wonder if it is a seed Lunala could quite possibly be uh, be Tailwind support for that uh, the Kyogre and the rest of the team uh, we are going to see the electric terrain overwritten though by our Tapu Fini and we know that Tapu Koko is timid because of its shiny ability no no um, we have to be careful with the Z move as well of course here because the Z move can do big 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 damage to our Eveltal um, kind of makes me want to switch into Groudon but at the same time I don't really. I hate bringing Groudon in before I get my um before my opponent brings in their weather. I like to use it as more disruptive than anything else. I think I'm just going to go for a snarl. I feel pretty confident with the psychic train not up that we'll be able to take this, and I'm just going to heal pulse Eveltal just to undo any damage that this Tapu Koko does. We're going to see Eveltal switch out here. We're going to see Incineroar hit the field. Incineroar. And if this Tapu Koko does go for a Z move. We should, like I said, with the electric train not on the field now, just an electro web. So that's that's not bad. That's not bad. It could have been a lot worse. It's more of a support of Tapu Koko, I think, more than anything else, indicating that with the electro web. Mm, so we will get the snarl. It's more useful on the Tapu Koko than anything else. Of course, not really worrying that Incineroar too much, um, but we will be able to get ourselves all back to full health with our Tapu Fini, which is very nice. Um, I think I do want to adjust my board a little bit. I do want to get Groudon in. It's a really good time to get Groudon in. But then again, I think the only the best thing to switch out for Groudon, again, like the previous match, what we're thinking about later is when that Kyogre hits the field, is having a good switch back in for it. And that would be the Tapu Fini. So I am going to Snarl again, because I don't see the Tapu Koko staying in here. And I'm going to just switch in Groudon now. The problem is, if my opponent U-turns or Volt switches here when the Kyle comes in, it'll overwrite our son and we'll be in all sorts of trouble. But if that does happen, especially with the Tapu Koko, we get a snarl onto the Kyogre. As long as we're not faked out, which we are, Volt switch. Okay, so trying it, but we're going to be able to get at least substitute up here, which is very nice. Or a precipice blades. What's my opponent got that's yeah, no, they've got two grass types that could come in, but it's not likely they've got any grass types. So I could launch that Christmas Blades into the Incineroar slot for sure. Um, 
and just snarl again because I feel like a Volt Switch will come out from the core core. So getting a snarl and going for the Tectonic Rage. Taking advantage of it early on into that Incineroar slot. We get rid of the Incineroar. There's a Volt Switch coming out. Like, we really want the Kyogre to come in here more than anything else. Critical hit, a little bit unfortunate, but we can deal with that. Obviously, Precipice Blades into a Kyogre is going to be the best. We're not seeing the Incineroar switch out, so we will be able to remove it from the field. Snarl's going to be super useful here for us against this Lunala in particular. Because of that Electra Web, we are slower than a Groudon right now with our Eveltal. So, at least we remove one thing. Making use of as they move. <sighs> Let me break that shadow shield and do a big chunk of damage to that Lunala. Imagine the Coco to come in here, but also the Kyogre is probably not bad. Yeah not a bad spot for it but like i say earlier in the game we made sure we got that tapu finny to come in on this slot so we can actually ensure and i'd imagine that the lunala to switch out for tapu coco here um there are snarl or sucker punch i think i snarl again and bring in tapu finny for groudon but uh, I feel like now we're in a, not a bad place, especially with Tapakogo with its sash in the back. Um, as long as Ivalto can just take at least a water spout from this from this range, Gem Holpen, it's going to be class. It's going to be class, as always. Water spout. Come on, Ivalto. Like a boss, like a boss. There we go. Do not let me guys beam. This shouldn't take us out. Where's it into, though? Yeah. Oh! Eveltal, the king, has returned. <laughs> so we get that snarl, take down the Lunala. This opens the door now for the type of Coco to come in. We've won the weather war. We've got that Kyogre down to minus one. So Groudon coming in at any point. It's going to be in a really nice position. I don't want to just freely switch it in, though. I feel like maybe just... Let's assess what we've got in the back. Like, type of Coco... And Groudon, yeah, I don't think we switch out here. I think we just switch straight, let these two go down, and then we can clean up the match pretty pretty tidily from here. I'm just going to go for a... Actually, I'm going to go for a Sucker Punch into the Kyogre, just to get some extra damage onto it before it goes down. And mm, an Icy Wind is always handy if we can get it off. But I don't know if we're going to be able to. Maybe a Swagger, uh, a Gravity might have been good, but... Just being faster than both of these would be would be marvelous if we could do that. Sucker Punch coming out from Ebeltal, so coming in handy again, gonna reduce the damage of that water spout for sure. Um, which is always helpful. Not doing very much on this type of Finny, but I can't imagine Finny taking any hit from this type of Coco now. Thunder, 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 thunder. Yeah, well, they will take us down for sure, but these two have done so much work and paved the way for. Coco Groudon to come in now and just easily, and I mean easily, clean up. There are no problems. The sun is up. This Kyogre is scarfed. It goes before the type of Coco, so we know it's locked into water spout. Half health. It's not going to be doing much damage. And unless this type of Coco's got grass knot, we really don't have too much to worry about. So we will just lock in to Precipice. Bades and go for a Thunderbolt into the Kyogre. So there's the Water Spout coming out. Let's see the damage on this thing. It does break the Sash and the Tapu Koko and does a measly 26 damage to Groudon. There's the Thunderbolt. Going to be able to knock out the opposing Kyogre pretty nicely. And Tapu Koko left all in its lonesome with Dazzling Gleam. Not an option you see too often on Tapu Koko, but one that I still do like, has good utility and Groudon, making sure that it's not gonna miss any more Precipice Blades in the week in style and pick up our second victory of the day and gives this team a perfect send off. So thank you so much guys for tuning in. What a good game. We've had 
to finish up on today. Good game to Ale and uh, good game to our first opponent in game one. And uh, I hope you've really enjoyed today's episode. It's been probably a bit more refreshing. I had a little bit of a break from the, the tenuous <laughs> cycle I was in with those precipice blades. Me and my relationship with precipice blades goes, uh, goes way deeper than normal. So, um, yes, I just hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Do remember to leave a like and support the channel, support this series, these, uh, these episodes. Subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss anything and uh, just have a great weekend and i look forward to seeing you on monday with a brand new team so i cannot wait i'm not going to give any spoilers out but uh, i'm sure you're going to be excited and enjoy it so till then guys take care of yourselves have a great weekend and bye bye <laughs>